right, we are trying a brand new sound feed for all of you today. So we are hoping this will go well. So let's quick thumbs up, make sure everybody can still hear me and that you all heard Alan playing. I think you did, yay. So, and then you can all unmute and say hi to each other. That would be lovely. That is lovely. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have to say, uh, you're, you're lovely for showing up on a beautiful day like this. It's hard to be inside at a computer. Um, when outside. outside. Oh, I see some people have managed to be outside and on a computer. That's a great combination. Kudos to you if you can do it. And now that we have greeted each other, let me just go through the quick announcements for the life of the community. Can I go on the air? Sure. And, but I'm going to go ahead and have everybody mute yourselves again. All righty. Great. So, you know, Alan and I are, are practicing with this. So if, if we go astray and you can't hear us, you're just going to have to unmute yourselves and shout at us because <laughs> we're going to try to get it right. But, but it involves a little bit more like uh, toggling on our end than we have done in the past. So first of all, um, thank you to the audio team that figured this out last Sunday after church, ordered all the equipment, and then even this morning, up until about five minutes before church, we're helping us just perfect how it was working. And I'm sure we'll still have a few more lessons in getting it right. But again, you know, for the creativity and imagination of people who are improving the way that we get to hear the live music shared with the church is wonderful. Other announcements for the life of the church. Next week will be communion. So um, remember to bring your communion elements next week when, we, when you come to church. And then also, that will be the first week that we're going to start. We're, we're going to, right now we've been doing a 915 in-person service for the few people that wanted to be here in body. We're going to consolidate back to the 1030 time frame for both Zoom and in person. So if you really want the in-person church experience, you're more than welcome to attend the 1030, but we will be also doing it as Zoom. So for the Zoom folks, it's not going to change. You'll have the full experience you're having now. We just may have a few people sitting in front of me, not visible to you, who are listening in person to the, the service. So um, come if you want to and otherwise be safe and comfortable where you are with your lovely beverage of choice at home and or inside or outside wherever you may be and for, for now i believe those are the big announcements um i'll just share two other calendar things one is that on sunday october 11th during columbus day weekend we will be having a memorial service at four o'clock to remember the life of Judy Herrick, who died several weeks ago. That is being coordinated by several of her friends and colleagues, but it will be here at the Jackson Church, and we will be Zooming that, so we will make sure to share that with you because we will have a limit on the number of people that can attend in person. Um, but if you're, if you're particularly interested in being part of that service, reach out to me, and I will put you in connection with those that are coordinating the service. And we're going to have a pet blessing on the same day, but earlier in the morning. So we'll have an outdoor pet blessing. So if you're nearby and you have a pet or a farm animal, or, or if you can even bring a picture if you can't bring the animal in person, we will bless your pets outside earlier in the day, October 11th. Those are our two big announcements. <laughs> so now we're going to listen to it. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church that I didn't share? I have a couple of plugs for things okay. that are ongoing. Thank you. Um, Friday night, we resumed our cocktails and Christian conversation at five o'clock. Um, a lively discussion, really excellent. And I encourage anybody to participate via Zoom. You don't have to have any knowledge of the Bible at all, or you can have some. It's um, very worthwhile and a, and a really interesting discussion. And the other plug I want to put in is that we would love to have more people come to our choir rehearsals. Um, you don't have to live anywhere near here. And you also don't have to have a voice 
working very well at 9 a.m. because while you practice, you're muted from everybody else. But um, we would love to have anyone come and join us, see if you like it or not, um, from, for our Christmas songs that we're already preparing. We're having a great time and would love more people. to the community that we didn't get. No other announcements. Okay, then we are going to have Alan play some centering music for us. And now let us begin by centering with a little bit of poetry, which I am now retrieving. I'm very organized. I put everything here and then I move it all around and it's immediately missing. This is a poem from Rumi. And it's called, The Body is Like Mary. We will be meditating on the body corporate and the body personal, the body communal and the body individual today as we reflect on the epistles of Paul and particularly the letter, letters written to the Corinthian community. We start with this meditation, the body is like Mary. The body is like Mary and each of us has a Jesus inside. Who is not in labor? Holy labor, every creature is. See the value of true art. When the earth or a soul is in the mood to create beauty. For the witness might then for a moment know beyond any doubt, God is really there within. So innocently drawing life from us with her umbilical universe, infinite existence though also needing to be born. Yes, God also needs to be born. Birth from a hand's loving touch. Birth from a song, from a dance. Breathing life into this world. The body is like Mary. And each of us, each of us has a Christ within. This is our first meditation on bodies. And as you know, we then turn to prayer and our prayers are often about bodies. So it's a very good connection for us today. And so I invite any prayers that you may wish to share of concern first, followed by celebration for those in your life. I am going to begin our prayer time this morning by asking for prayers for B. Davis, who is at Memorial Hospital just at the moment. She fell and broke her hip, and she is waiting for transfer to rehab. And I did get to go visit her, and I appreciate those who take the time to alert me when somebody is in the hospital, because the hospital does not call and tell us when somebody's there, we have to find out through the community. So it's up to you guys to let us know if there's somebody that we should be out there visiting. Do you have other prayers of concern that you wanna share out loud right now? If you do, please unmute yourself and go ahead and speak. 
Hi, it's Janice Brodel. Hi, Janice. Um, I'd like prayers for my husband, Barry. Um, he went to the hospital last Sunday um, with uh, a UTI, which puts him in you know, severe danger. And we just found out this morning that it's gone into his kidneys. So oh, they've no. called in a nephrologist and um, we're waiting for news. So could we have some, I know we've been on the prayer list and people are wonderful, but we have a few extras. That would be great. Thank you. We will pray as many extra prayers for Barry's kidney and his whole body and for all of you as we can. So lift up. Let's just take a moment to bless Barry's kidney. Send some good energy to Barry's kidney and his whole body. For those who do not recall, Barry experienced a very severe spinal injury and is paralyzed. Um, and with all those injuries come many, many other challenges. And he's been making amazing progress, but with progress comes setbacks. And this is a very serious one. And so we hold every part of his body in prayer and his whole family as members of our body also in prayer. Other prayers of concern, please go ahead and unmute yourselves if you wish to lift them up out loud. I'll go, Reverend Gail. Okay, Kevin. Uh, prayer for you and Chris and Jennifer Perkins. And prayer for Rob's wife who has stage four lung cancer. And prayer for Holly and her daughter who have cerebral palsy. And prayer for Caitlin who um, has abdominal issues. And prayer for Max's dad who has liver problems. And prayer for my fiance and our entire family and prayer for the first responders. You know that if uh, you ask Kevin to pray for you, he is going to put you on his <laughs> list and he's going to put you on everybody else's list. So he's got a pretty good running list at any given time. <laughs> so we thank Kevin for his um, willingness to bring so many people to prayer. Other prayers of concern. Alan has one that he would like to share. So prayers for Father Steve. And prayers for another music ministry team member at the church who's got, who's got parents in the hospital as well. And, and so Our Lady of the Mountains is having some multiple challenges with their music ministry and their ministry teams and so prayers for all those who feel called to God's service but are, need to be present to their families too. Um, may, may the whole congregation be upheld and may those that serve the congregation be upheld and our community is with your community and we will pray for all of you. Other prayers? We did have some other requests for prayers. Uh, Roland Dubois remains in our prayers. Tony remains in our prayers. Frank, the brother of Sandy, who's just been diagnosed with cancer, is in our prayers. Sue, who will be undergoing hip surgery in October, is in our prayers. Chips in France, who's in the hospital, and a dear friend of one of our congregation members, and she's alone over there, so she could use our prayers across the ocean. Prayers for those that have been moved into different kinds of facilities. Gordon, who's living at Mountain View, B, when she goes to where her rehab is. Barry in the hospital. Um, Ralph, Meg's dad, who lives at Mineral Springs. For all those in so many different ways who are living apart from those that they love, whether it's at colleges or different institutions. And for those that are relocating, those who are changing their lives, um, there are so many people that are either coming here to the valley and putting down roots or for many different reasons must leave the valley. And for all these comings and goings and the people that are part of 
our body, our church, our neighbors, our friends, our loved ones. It's hard to let people go. It, and we're glad to welcome new people, but we love our, our familiar faces. We pray for those that are living with cancer. There are so many living with a cancer diagnosis. Claire and Cheryl share with us their journey. There are others who are quietly undergoing treatment, diagnosis. We pray also for Deanna. We pray for Judy. We pray for so many on this journey, wherever they may be on this journey. We pray for those living with Alzheimer's, diabetes, ALS, COVID, the changes in our bodies, uh, mental health, as well as physical health. We pray for our body, our body communal, and our body personal. Let's once more hold our hands up and offer blessing to each other. A blessing of healing energy, stability and resilience. May the love and our prayers flow out and surround and warm up and light up those parts of the body, the people, the bones, the tissue, the hearts, the minds that need love, may it be felt. And where there can be healing and recovery, let that recovery come. And if there can be dignity and peace and comfort on the journey, wherever it may go, surround each of us with that gift. We pray together. Thank you. And now we ask for your prayers of gratitude because when we lift up these heavy things, we need to have some hope and some light also. Do you have prayers of thanksgiving or happiness that you want to share today? Cheryl. Um, I wanted to just uh, mention a celebration for Tom's birthday coming up on Wednesday the 30th. Okay. Are you going to tell us how old he is or is that secret? Um, it's a significant birthday, even though not just every year is a significant birthday. It's not... Uh, 67. He's 67. I'm allowed oh. to... Oh, oh you're... <laughs> Well, then, um, I think that means that we get to have the happiness of, of singing happy birthday to Tom. Are, I'm going to just ask, are there any other birthdays or anniversaries that anybody here is going to admit to? Nobody's, nobody's admitting to anything. I'm sure there are others in our community, but Tom, you get the whole focus today. <laughs> well, let's do it out loud. Birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> I'm like, it's better and better. <laughs> Yay! Tom, I think you got like a two round chorus there of happy birthday. <laughs> With an, it's an echo chorus, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Um, and one Gail. more request. Are there any prayers of happiness? Kevin, it sounds like you got one, and Sandy's got one. Go ahead, Kevin. Should I go? Yes, please do. I'm, I'm grateful for Jesus and how much he loves you and Chris and our entire church and me. I'm grateful for that. And I'm, I'm grateful that God and the angels and our loved ones in heaven connect in the, with us in many different ways here on earth. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Sandy, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for my sister, Jennifer, who is in South Carolina, um, helping to move my dad to Ohio to be near my mom and the rest of our family. 
She has been phenomenal in helping my mom over the last several months get all this taken care of. And we just couldn't do it without her. She's just an awesome person. So I'm thankful for her. Prayers of gratitude for our family members, especially when they are taking care of our other vulnerable family members that we can't be near. So for Jennifer, who's helping move Sandy's father to be with the rest of his family, and for our other sisters, we have sisters that are here together today, Kate and Meg, for instance, uh, you know, for family connections, for the gift of them. And one final opening for uh, celebrations, and then we're going to go ahead and pray together. All right, then let us pray. Holy God, today we are reminded that we are your body and that when one part of your body hurts, we all hurt, and that when one part of your body feels good and whole, we are all sharing in that wholeness and that celebration. This is the ideal to which we aspire, and it may not always come true, but you call us to this connection. And we ask that you will be present in this connection because we cannot do it by ourselves, and we can't be alone in it and do it as well as we can together. We have named the parts of our body, the people, the places, the lives that are in pain and need your attention. We think, too, of national leaders that need wisdom. We think, too, of our children who are out in different parts of the world, some of them serving in the military, some of them serving in the medical front, some of them in other places, your sons and your daughters who are putting their own bodies in harm's way on behalf of other communities and this world and this environment. We think of our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutari in the nation of Zimbabwe, and we think of the communities in Honduras that have been so hard hit by COVID and so many other things. We think of California when we think of Claire, who's out there fighting those fires and the communities and the lives that have been changed by those natural disasters as well. And we ask for joy. We ask for joy because this world is your body and this world is showing us beauty. The bright red leaves on the trees, the warm days, the coming of autumn, we give thanks. We give thanks for the beauty of this world that reminds us that there is goodness to share and to enjoy, enough for all of us. And now we pray together as you first taught us. Please unmute yourselves if you would to pray together our the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, be done. Be done. on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us, us our sins, as we forgive, as we forgive, forgive those that are sent to heaven. Lead us not into temptation, not to but, but deliver us, us evil. from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the glory, and glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And at this time, we will begin reading scripture. This is going to be another one of our experiments. We're going to try playing the piano underneath the scripture reading. And you guys can give us a thumbs up if it's incredibly disruptive. But if it works, we're going to give it a whirl. These are selections taken from the first and the second letters to Corinthians, written by Paul. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. And God's weakness is stronger than human strength. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, 
to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member that there may be no dissension within the body. But the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it, but strive for the greater gifts and I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. We regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God has reconciled the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we, we are ambassadors for Christ, for love. So ends the reading. Thank you. And now I would ask that you would pray together with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. In your name we pray. Amen. And now... Let us think on what it means to be members of this body together in these very challenging times. We are, both communally and personally, the ambassadors of holy love for the larger world and for each other. And we are challenged in these times to extend that spirit of reconciliation to each other, even when we don't agree on everything, when we vote in two different parties, when we're not sure that we can see eye to eye on so many different questions and issues. It's precisely this kind of turmoil, this kind of uncertainty in a pluralistic world with many ethnicities, many different 
world experiences, people that are affluent and people that have almost nothing, people that are highly educated and literate and people that are not conversant in scripture or any kind of formal scholarship, people that are literally owned by others in the time of Paul and people that are free and own their own bodies, their own lives, their own futures, people that operate from a position of strength, mobility, authority, resource, rich lives, and people that have the opposite experience are all trying to be in the same community together, and it is challenging. And in the course of this correspondence that Paul has with people, he's literally answering a series of questions. People ask him, well, what do you think about this, and who's right? Um, how should we, you know, like, should we eat the meat that was offered to other gods on the altar of other gods, or shouldn't we? Um, is it okay for us to have different kinds of intimate relationships that are untraditional, like outside marriage? You know, like, hey, should I sleep with the prostitutes at the temple? Is that okay? Um, should we sit down and eat together? And when we have all these different wonderful gifts that come from the Holy Spirit, hey, some people are speaking in tongues and some people have the gift of music and songwriting and others feel the spirit of prophecy come upon them. And when we all get together, we all talk at the same time and we all try to speak over each other and share our gifts on top of other people's gifts, not necessarily creating space for each gift to have its own way of being expressed and fully appreciated by others. Why, why can't we hear God in the middle of all that? These are some of the questions that the community in Corinth is asking Paul, and he's weighing in on all these. And his main focus is not to actually figure out all the social engineering and tell everybody exactly how they should all live together. They, they have to figure that out because community by community, how that will happen is very different. Then is now, rural versus urban, small church versus big church, churches that have a lot of things in common and churches that have a lot of divisions. Each of us has to learn what it means to take this, this text about the body of Christ and extrapolate it into our own lives. Paul's main message was that the lens through which we do these things is love. That that great passage that we so often use to bind husband and wife, spouse to spouse, Love is patient, love is kind. That passage that we've heard again and again, so we almost don't hear it anymore, it wasn't, it wasn't written for marriage partners. It wasn't written for individuals. It was written for people that belong, that identify with a community, and yet are having trouble. It was written then as now for a way to understand the lens of love as the way to get past who's right, whose side should I take, not to choosing a side, but actually choosing, as I've said over the past few weeks, righteousness, a right relationship with God and each other, to choose righteousness in your relationship over who's right. Because in large part, it's not going to be an either or, it's going to be a both and. Everybody probably has something valuable to share from their perspective, their life experience, their interpretation of what's going on. And if we are all valuable members of the body, then each of us has a role to play. We have been given gifts. And each of us needs to find and be offered the chance to fulfill our role and our purpose in equilibrium with others. And we know, we know from the prayers that we prayed this morning that to make the metaphor the body is a dangerous metaphor. Bodies are unpredictable. Bodies are vulnerable. Sometimes parts of the body can never function the way that they were meant to function. And sometimes bodies come out differently than almost everybody else. One wonderful theologian who is beginning to think about 
spiritual theology for his whole community was trying to figure out if his sibling who lives with Down syndrome could ever be recognized as a full member of his community. And this passage about the body honoring those that are most vulnerable or weakest or most different was critical to the way that he thought about and understood his own siblings' connection to his faith community. And he concluded that the way his, body, his, his sibling's body was made, that there was a chromosomal difference. And to take away the chromosom chromosomal difference, to suddenly miracul miraculously heal that chromosomal difference, would have actually taken away his sibling's identity. And his sibling, as the person that he knew and loved, could never be the same. And so his hope for healing and recognition of his sibling within the body of Christ wasn't that he would somehow be miraculously changed, but that his body and his mind with the gifts that he brought was intrinsically important and crucial just the way his sibling was fashioned. So, do you mind closing the doors? We have a lot of sound coming into the sanctuary, so we're going to close the doors. But, you know, so some bodies come fashioned the way that they are, and people will always live in that identity, and other bodies are changed by a cancer diagnosis, by a fall or an accident, or, or simply the process of aging and changing, or by mental health. And yet, this same passage can help us recognize that when we come with our differences into community, regardless of whether we feel shy or uncertain about our gifts, or very bold and confident, all of us are vital to the well-being of the whole of our full community. And if we don't hear the voice of those who are different, if we don't see and recognize those that share a different perspective, we're losing out. And in particular, Paul's letter, the second one to the Corinthians, when he was talking about this community in conflict, he was in conflict with the community of Corinth himself. They were angry with him. He had been stern with them. We're not quite sure what was happening because we only have his end of the story. We only have his letter to tell us what might be going on. But he was also working on reconciliation. He was trying to reconcile with this church that was one of the mainstays of the young, the, the young early Christian movement. And he was also working towards reconciliation between the mother church, the Jewish church, and the very traditional ways that they understood faith and the complexity of the Gentile churches, the, those that were the Greco-Roman churches in the broader world, and how different they were, and trying to bring them into some kind of relationship and alignment. And in the writing of that letter, that second letter, he says that the work of the church, of the body corporate, is reconciliation, is to find relationship with each other. And not unlike that first letter where he says, it's not about who's right, it's about the righteousness of being in community together. He argues again that the great work of the early church is to find ways to be connected, to understand each other and come to agreement and compromise and consensus and a communal experience where we may not all agree on every single thing, but we can honor our differences and recognize that there is a symphony, a chord. Each note is playing a part that creates a whole, that creates the song, that creates the music of who we are. And that in order to play that music, to play that song, reconciliation is essential. And he tells us even more so that when we honor the parts of the body that are weak and vulnerable and different, 
This is an act of reconciliation because reconciliation in the way that Paul understood it and often the way that Christ lived it meant that the person who had the capacity to move, to be mobile and flexible and adaptable, the person who was strong had to move towards the one who was weak. And in this case, not, not just a single individual, but an entire population needed to move one segment of the population towards the other to find connection, to honor each other, to be reconciled with each other. The move had to begin with those who were strong, who had the dominant voice, who had the resources, who had the authority and the capacity to make possible the space, the welcome at the table, the recognition in the full body and community of others. And Christ embodied that in his own life and in his own death. He literally walked and put his body between us, between those who loved him and harm's way, for his belief, for his faith, for his own holy connection to God, because he was God on earth living out what it meant to be holy and to be human all at once. And that meant letting his own body be broken and hurt, that others might be safe, and that he would live beyond his words and his actions because of what he believed in and stood for, that only by the breaking of his body and the emptying out of his life might the fullness of purpose be filled and fulfilled because in that breaking open and in that vulnerability is the movement of the strong to the weak, is reconciliation. He opened up his life and shared it so that others might pick up the story and the movement and in turn step out into the world with their hands and their feet and their hearts and their minds and move into other vulnerable places and themselves become vulnerable. Paul wrote an entire laundry list about all the things that went wrong in his life. Shipwrecks, floggings, imprisonments, illnesses, depression and sorrow. And he used them to, to describe his qualifications as a follower of Christ because he was making himself vulnerable. He left his comfortable, easy, affluent, authoritative life to the places where he was called and the people to whom he was called because he had to make the moves to begin to found new churches and bring love in new and different ways to other places. Just as Christ died and his followers opened up their lives and reinterpreted what it meant to be community, and with that came pain and discomfort and turmoil and in asking, hey, hey, which side of this is right? Which side of this is wrong? And trying to figure it all out. It was messy. It was imperfect. But God, in, in the scripture we're reading, God didn't choose perfect people. If he'd chosen perfection, no single human being would have ever become a living vessel of hope and healing for another person. There would have been no breaking open of the church and the caring of the world if we waited for the perfect vessel to continue that work. We are each imperfect and messy, and yet the hope of love, the hope of reconciliation, the movement of the strong to the vulnerable, the, the inclusion of all of God's children within our community and in our lives depends on us. It lives in our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our feet, the way that we advocate and act and live and love in this world. Every one of those acts, if done through the filter of love, even if imperfect, is done with righteousness. We don't have to always get it right, and we don't have to be right. What we need to do is act righteously, to act for connection, 
with integrity in our relationship to what we believe and how that should look in our lives, in our community, and in our relationship to each other. Every member of the body of Christ is essential. And our bodies can be broken and work again in new ways, and sometimes parts of us are hurt and weeping, and sometimes parts of us are celebrating our 67th birthday or the birth of a new child, or the sharing of marriage vows, or the calling to a new job, or the moving to a new part of the world. Each of us is essential, and all of us together, we are the body of Christ, the body of God, the body of love, holy love, by whatever name you understand that love to be, we, in all of our messiness, we carry that in our being and in our lives and in the ways that our communities have the courage to also choose righteousness, to grapple with what is hard and listen to the others that have not been heard And make sure, always, that we are welcoming each other and seeing each other. You are the body of Christ. I am the body of Christ. Together, we are the body of Christ. Let us remember it in these troubling, challenging, creative times. The letter from Paul speaks to us now as it did 2,000 years ago, and we're still figuring it out. And hope is ours. Reconciliation is ours. Thanks be to God. I ask you now, friends, if you would once more turn to your promise to each other. Look at the gallery view if you can and look at each other and know that the promise that you make to this church is a promise to each other. It's not a promise to a little white building in the middle of a village. It's a promise to the people that either show up in this building or call in from California and Florida and other parts of the world, from Massachusetts, from all the places that we are, outside and inside, young and old, beyond all binaries, we have chosen to be together. May we remember the promises that we have made to each other. And though we are small, we are mighty. May we keep our promises to each other. And part of the promise that we make is that we will indeed Think about the strength of this church with our giving of our time, our talents, and our treasures. We have done very well. We're starting to feel the pressure of COVID on this little community in new and different ways. And you help us remain vital and visible and active. So please, in your giving, give as you are able. Go to jxncc.org or send us a check or drop something in one of the little baskets in the church if you're coming by and visiting. But remember that our promises to each other are real. We are feeding each other. We are rehousing each other. We are paying fuel bills. We are giving rides for medical appointments. We together are supporting each other. And you all make that possible. And now I would turn us to our final hymn of today, our one and only hymn of today. (laughs) We are going to sing, Though I May Speak, which is taken directly from the text that we just read this morning. And you'll be hearing, obviously, a communal recording of us singing together. You can mute yourselves and sing along, and we're going to put the words up for you now. (laughs) 
course the man behind the curtain is is going to tell me when I get home that I forgot to share with you any of the visuals that I was going to share with you during the sermon so oh well Woo. do it again next week if you come to the five o'clock you're sure to see them if you miss the five o'clock um, Friday cocktails and conversations you might get a few of them on Sunday and you might not <laughs> depends on whether I remember <laughs> so let us um, sing together our benediction and then we'll have our brief time of uh, coffee hour with your coffee at home thing. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> us a little bit of a transition then we'll unmute and you can all chat and then he'll play us out at the end of that time. Mm -hmm. 